Hello everyone, welcome back to Super Lurkana World. I believe this is the very, 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 very first in real life deck profile for Lurkana using real cards. I think. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But anyway, this is not the first. This is definitely one of the first. And now that we some of us have cards, you know, we can make deck profiles. And that's fun. Uh, this is a deck I've been testing with proxies for a while now, and me and my teammates on Luxury have been discussing the deck and testing it, and we honestly think that this deck might just be one of the strongest decks in the format. Tier 1, some would say. So I'm giving you this deck profile first. It is a Stitch based deck, and I'm going to show you all about it. If you guys like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. That would be great, because we're a new channel. and. And if we get 1,000 subscribers from this and 100 likes on this video, then I will upload a match of this deck in all its glory, kicking butt, and I'm sure you'll love to see that. And if you like this mat, by the way, if you like this mat, I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the mat. Look at that. That's a nice mat. Pretty nice mat, eh? You got Luxury Gaming over there in the corner, you know, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty nice mat. If you guys want that, uh, it is available for purchase. There's a promo code and link and everything. It'll be in the description, so you should definitely check that out. So anyway, we're starting with Rockstar Stitch here. It costs 6 to play, but it has Shift 4, so you can play it for 4 on top of Stitch, which is cool. And then it has the Adorn Fans ability. It will, whenever you play a character with 2 costs or less, you may exert them to draw a card. It's not once per turn. You can just keep doing it. You can draw a ridiculous amount of cards doing that. It can be used as ink, so that's cool. It's also a 3-5 that quests for 3. That is great stats, honestly, and the ability is what the whole deck's built around this. You're drawing lots and lots of cards and then doing lots of things with the cards you draw. So, enough on that. I'll show you guys what the rest of the deck looks like here. We obviously have four of the cheap Stitch. It's a one drop, two, two, a quest for one. It's the Stitch that you use to go into your bigger Stitch. That's what it's there for. Uh, we play four of the one drop Lilo. Lilo here is really, really cool because she is a one for one, one. Unfortunately, she can't be used for ink, but she does quest for two. Uh, and two lore on a one drop turn one could be really strong, potentially. Uh, it helps you kind of get ahead. You know, if you drop that turn one, your opponent doesn't have an answer to it immediately, it'll start just racking up, you know, lore before it, Lilo dies. That's pretty cool. You like racking up lore in this deck, considering, you know, you want to get to 20. That's the whole point. The last um, amber one drop we play is four copies of Hey Hey the Bolt Snack. Uh, it has support, so when it quests, it adds its power to another character you control till the end of the turn. So quests for one is just fine, but it adds that power to something else which might be you might be able to use to beat over something and over a challenge. So Hey Hey is very important. Hey Hey has come up. Hey Hey has definitely won games just by doing what Hey Hey does best and support. Sounds nice. Um, we do play a two drop in Amber. We play four copies of Simba. I think Simba is actually incredibly important. It has bodyguard. So you can play Exerted, which by the way, you're probably never going to do because you're going to use Stitch to exert him for you, but whatever. As long as he's Exerted, the Bodyguard ability means that if something would challenge, uh, this has to be challenged instead. So they can't actually challenge Stitch and, like, you know, clear it off the board or whatever through challenge until this is taken care of. So it's really, really, really annoying, uh, potentially, you know what I mean? Because you'll drop it, you'll use Stitch to exert it to draw a card, and you want it exerted anyway. So Simba actually has super huge value. And 2-3 on stats for a 2, uh, pretty good. And now um, there's one more Amber uh, character we play in this deck. It's not a 2 or 1 drop, but I think this is probably the best card in the first set. If you disagree, let me know. We're playing 4 copies of Rapunzel. Rapunzel is a 4 drop that can be used for ink, a 1-5 that quests for 2. And when you play this character, remove up the 3 damage counters for one of your characters, you draw a card for each one damage removed. Uh, I don't think I need to explain why this card's pretty broken. You can draw three cards potentially and heal in the process. Even if you draw two cards, that's really, really, really good. Not to mention, you know, she's kind of thick with that five defense and two lore. So the card gets you some value after you've played it, and then you're actually just healing and drawing cards. Like, drawing three cards is crazy. And I've done that. You draw three cards and you feel so ahead, especially since your stitch is healed. Oh my, it's crazy. This card's really good. And if you, you know, you draw it opening hand and, like, you want to ink it, that's okay. You'll draw more. That's not really a big deal. So, there you go. That's all the amber uh, characters. We'll get into the secondary color characters soon, so stay tuned. We play one item as a four of. 
we play four copies of Lantern. Lantern is actually incredibly important for a combo that I'll show you at the end of the video. But basically it's a two drop item. Uh, you tap it, you may pay one power less for your next character play this turn. That's very, very cool. It lets you, you know, play out characters for one less than you normally would. Which, A, helps you get out Stitch. But B, once you get out Stitch, you know, it's going to help you play more characters and draw more cards. So Lantern and Auto Inclusion has a 4 for sure. And now there's um, three, six more cards left, and they're all songs. We're playing three copies of Be Our Guest. Um, this card costs two, but it's a song, so if you have a two drop, you can you know, suspend it, exert it to play for free. And it says that a, uh, you look at the top four cards of your deck and had a character, but not the rest. So it does a little bit of deck thinning for you, which isn't too bad. Um, I, yeah, deck space is really tight. It was playing four, but I did throw in some other important cards. So I did drop it to three. However, um, if you want to play four of it, that's definitely probably also correct. I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, in fact, you can play four of this and two of this next card. It's three copies of Part of Your World. I really like this action. Um, so much so that I was playing two and I went up to three. Uh, you return a character card from discard to hand. You see, if they have a way to out your stitch, you need it back. Your, your deck doesn't really function properly without stitch. Um, so if they blow it up with, you know, dragon fire or whatever, or multiple steel actions, you know, part of your world can add it back, and you can start to do the process all over again. Uh, it, does, it can't be strength, whatever, but it can be sun, and it costs three. So the card is really good. And I actually found that I really wanted more copies of this card. I bumped it to three because in testing, you know, Stitch was dying. Or you can add back Rapunzel, which is part of your world, heal a Stitch, draw three cards, and you're doing really good all of a sudden. So I, I think that three copies is fine, but if you want to go like two and four, I, that's fine too. That's it for the Amber cards. Now our secondary ink in this deck, we are playing, I, there's multiple ways to do this. The best way we found is with Steel. So we'll do the characters first. Four copies of Simba, it's a one drop uh, that on play draw discard. So with Stitch, you draw two, discard one, which is pretty, pretty good. And then we play three copies of Captain Hook. Captain Hook is a very ideal turn one drop uh, with Challenger 2. It means that they're not going to be, you know, questing with, you know, just their random one drop, two drop characters. Because Captain Hook can get over them with Challenger. It's a one drop too, so if you draw it later, it's pretty good. Now the rest of the deck is all of the defensive part. We play Steel for its destructive and defensive capabilities. So we play two copies of Cerberus. Cerberus is a good value 5 drop, uh, it's a 5 6. It's beating over a lot of the things in the format, especially when you combine it with things like Hey Hey, and combine it with things that you're going to see here for less of steel cards. You know, Cerberus can beat the biggest of creatures by itself, and then with a little bit of support, even bigger creatures. So I think two copies of Cerberus is perfectly acceptable. I play three copies of Beast. Uh, on play, it deletes an item or banishes an item. It costs 5 to play, it can be used as ink, it's a 4-4 four, four and quests for 2. I'm playing this because I don't know how, you know, prevalent items will be in the first set meta. If everyone is playing items, then Beast is obviously an inclusion on something like 3. But, you know, if you're at Locals or whatever, and you're not seeing a lot of items, and you're trying this deck out, maybe you cut back the Beasts for something else. But in my testing, all decks use items, some kind of items. Maybe it's just one item, like Lantern, or something else. And Beast gets good value. So uh, three copies of for now, but again, it can be adjusted. If you, if you really don't see that many items, Beast can go down, and that's fine. Then, the last character in the deck, two copies of the Giant Fairy Tinkerbell. Giant Fairy Tinkerbell is very strong. It's a six, can be used ink. It's a four, five, quests for two. Uh, the shift never comes up because we never tinker well, but whatever. It's a good six drop for sure, because when you play it, you deal one damage to everything. Uh, that's already, you know, strong on a body, so that's pretty cool. But then it has this other ability, the Puny Pirate ability. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character to challenge, you may deal two damage to opposing character. So you get to pick one of your opponent's characters if you run over something, and deal two damage to it, which is probably going to blow it up. So Tinkerbell forces your opponent to, like, not suspend or exert their characters, because if they do, you'll run over them with Tinkerbell, and then you'll pop someone else, probably. So Tinkerbell is a very, like, 
opportunistic card for you in the late game, because it'll make your opponent make some really weird plays that might actually return in your favor in terms of advantage. Because if they don't suspend and they don't exert and don't quest, don't do anything, well then they're not really playing the game probably. And if they do decide to do that because they think it's the most value, then with Tinkerbell combined with some other steel cards here, which we'll go through in a second, uh, you could probably just blow up their whole board. And then you have a big fairy that your opponent can't really deal with. So that's what for the characters. There are 12 op cards left and they're all actions. We play four copies of Fire the Cannons. It is shock. It deals two damage for one. That's what it's there for. Then we play three copies of, four copies of Smash. It's a lightning strike for three. It deals three to a random character. Sorry, not random character, a chosen character. Uh, you might think that, you know, the shock is more valuable. And sometimes the shock is really good early game. But, you know, you might need smash. You might need that extra damage with the smash to pop something. I know I have plenty of times. Smash is really good. And the final four cards of the deck, arguably one of the most oppressive removal cards in the game right now, uh, grab your sword. Grab your sword of five drop that can be sung for free if you have a five or higher in play. And it deals two damage to each opposing characters. So this in tandem with challenges, with things like fire the cannons, you know what I mean? You can like break a board. I've had people break my boards with grab your sword and I've had broken boards with grab your sword. Grab your sword is a really good card. And once your opponent knows that you're playing grab your sword, they kind of have to be careful. Because, like, what are they going to do, right? What are they going to do? Like, are they just going to throw all the two drops on the board? Probably not. they got to play more cautiously now, which you can use to your favor. All right, that's it for the deck profile. I'm going to show you the real quick combo. And by the way, I am going to be discussing uh, more content uh, related to this deck on my Patreon. I know pl I'm plugging everything in this video, but it's the first deck profile. So, uh, yeah, leave me alone. Yeah, if you want more uh, Lorcana stuff, there will definitely be stuff on Patreon. Like just detailed breakdowns of the deck and general good practices to use with this deck, that kind of thing. So, you know, the, let's say you have these cards in your opening hand and the rest of your cards are just, you know, they can be used as ink. Doesn't matter what they are. All right. So you turn one, you make an ink, you play a stitch. Turn two, you play an ink, and you make an ink, and you make, play a lantern. Turn three, do another ink, and then you can shift for four on this stitch. You have one, two, three, and this counts as the fourth because you're just cost by one. So turn three, you can actually just make your big rock star stitch. And then turn four, you know, it's gonna be hard for them to deal with that turn four. And then you start popping off. I think every single game that I've gotten turn three stitch out, I've won. I've pretty much, I, I believe. Unless I'm forgetting something in all the games I've played, you get turn three stitch out, you're auto winning the game. Uh, I even had a mirror match once where we both did this and uh, I still won that game. So I guess it's valid. I guess it's perfectly valid. But yeah, that is it for the Stitch, uh, cheap aggro, whatever you call this deck, deck profile. I think the steel cards add a lot of value. You're drawing a lot of cards and you're playing defensive cards to blow up your opponent's board so that you can just quest with your little little, little weenie guys for game. But what do you guys think about the deck profile? Would, is this something you want to try? I definitely recommend trying it, but do you like Stitch and other color combinations? You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see you later. Bye!